Genesis chapter 2. We're going to camp out there. Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to give you a while. It's not that hard, man. It's the first book of the Bible, okay? And you only have to go to chapter 2. So really, all we have to turn is one page, all right? So Genesis chapter 2, we're going to be looking at uh, a lot of verses there, okay? Um, as you're doing that, I want, to, I want to share some stories, some Jason stories. There was this, um, my aunt lives in this small town in Nebraska. And in this small town, I think the population was 500 people. And everywhere th where she lived, it was almost like, uh, I wouldn't want to say farm ho farmhouses, but they were farmhouses that were on like two or three lots. You know what I mean? They weren't acres, but lots. So they're pretty well spaced out in this Nebraska town. And I remember going out there. Uh, in the summer. I loved it. Amy can remember this too. And uh, so if you went down this road, talking about Aunt Carlene's house. So if you went down this road, uh, just down the road was, there was a, a cemetery. And we, I don't know why we'd always walk that road to the cemetery, but we would. And it was a dirt road. And it was, it's Nebraska, right? So everything's a dirt road. And so you just, you're just walking down this dirt road. But when you walk down that dirt road at night, Man, there were fireflies and lightning bugs everywhere, you remember? And so I look at John and say, you remember, but I'm meant to talk to me, right? And so you remember, and there's these lightning bugs everywhere. And it was amazing, right? And I love that road. And even today, when I dream about it, I can still see that road. I love that road. I love that dirt road. It just brings back a lot of memories. The dirt road in Nebraska. But there's this also road, there's another road that's by my house. And uh, when I go on my prayer walk, I love to walk down this road. It's kind of like towards the end. And it's, uh, I even forget the name of the street. I don't pay attention to the name of the street. But there's some abandoned old homes on there. And there's this like stone wall. When I say stone wall, like they're made out of rocks and, and, and mortar. And it's just, it's amazing. Some of it is falling down. And uh, you just, but the moment I turn on it, uh, to that road, I can instantly feel the Holy Spirit. And I told Trudy, I said, I want to buy one of these old rundown homes. And she's like, why do you want to buy it? I was like, I don't know. I just want to buy it. I just want to be a part of that, okay? And so we can build it up. And you can, just like a little creek, and you can build a bridge to, to Bithia over there and just be a part of it. And I just love that street. It's paved, and there's trees that kind of overhang it. And, and my dog, Layla, when we watch, she loves it too because there's a ton of rabbits. Uh, she just, it just, it's just good. I, it just feels good to be walking on that road. When I was at Eastern Illinois University, my, my roommate and I, his name was Dan. And Dan reminded me, acted and looked a lot like Chris Farley. So we got along really well. And so one day we decided that we were going to ditch class together. You see, we were on the third floor. Uh, we could oversee the, like, the, the student uh, center uh, where people were coming. And, <laughs> and one day, all we did is we looked out and we watched how people walked. Right? And it was very interesting how people walked. You ever noticed it? Some, uh, maybe you should go out and check out how people walk. Some people walking on their arms are like swinging really good. Some of them are like, I don't know how you do it, but some don't even move. Can you, I, try that. Try that. Go walk down. Here. David, next, when you walk downtown, I want you to walk like this. Find out how hard it is. It is very hard. It's stiff. Some people just, arms are swinging. Some people, now listen, cell phones weren't a thing back then, so nobody was looking down and doing all that stuff, right? The arms are swinging and things are moving and, you know, and we just laughed. It was funny. And then, then of course, we became very cautious of how, how we walked, you know, just like, I'm walking normal. Is this normal, Dan? Do I look normal to you? He's like, you never look normal. And so you always tried to watch how you arm. You always watch how people's arms swayed, right? Walking on the roads. Life is a lot like streets that we walk on today. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on three roads, three streets today. And we're going to follow Adam and Eve on these streets. Adam and Eve walked on easy streets. Adam and Eve walked on Hidden Street. And Adam and Eve walked on Uneven Street. And we're going to pay attention to these three streets. And how we, how they walked on it. How we are walking on it. And today, my sermon, 
My sermon entitled is called Walking the Streets with God. So before we get into the word, I want to pray. Okay, so let's pray. So Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. For you are good and you are mighty and you are powerful. Father, we thank you, God. Lord, that we get to enter into your throne room today and worship you, even on a cold day. Father, I pray, God, that even though it's cold out there, God, you warm us up in here. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in here. Come speak into us. Come speak life into us. Father, I pray, God, that you would open up our eyes and our hearts, Lord, so that we can receive, Father, what you want us to give. So, Father, I pray, God, that everybody under, the, under my voice, God, will receive you today. Father, remove all distractions. Father, remove all worry, fear, doubt. Father, that we would be standing in your presence, standing with you. Speak to us. Show us, God, what you want us to do. God, because we're going to be talking about some streets today. And some of us are going to recognize, Lord, that we are on one of these streets Father, and I pray, God, that you would, you would reveal to us, Father, that you are there. Be here. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you got Genesis chapter 2, say amen. amen. All right, let's stand as we read God's word today. Genesis chapter 2. So here's the deal. Here's what it's going to look like. So we're going to read Genesis verses 7 through 9. Then we're going to jump down and look at verses 15 to uh, 18. Then we're going to jump down again, and we're going to look at verses 21 through 23. Okay? We're going to do all that. So it's a lot to read, but I ask that you receive it. Here we go. One day, the eternal God scooped dirt out of the ground, sculpted it into the shape we call human, breathed the breath that gives life into the nostrils of the human, and the human became a living soul. Say living soul. living soul. The eternal God planted a garden in the east in Eden, a place of utter delight, and placed the man whom he had sculpted there. In this garden, he made the ground pregnant with life. Don't you love the way the, the author is writing about the words? Pregnant with life. Can you see it? Can you experience the garden? I can. Thanks for, thanks for your response. Right? So he made the ground pregnant with life, bursting forth with nourishing food and luxuriant beauty. He created trees, and in the center of the garden of delights stood the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In these next verses that we see, he talks about the irrigation of this garden and how God took care of the irrigation. Right? Jump down to verse 15. The eternal God placed the newly made man in the Garden of Eden in order to work the ground and care for it. He made certain demands of the, man, of the man regarding life in the garden. God said, eat freely from any and all trees in the garden. I only require that you abstain from eating the fruit of one tree, the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Beware, the day you eat the fruit of this tree, you will certainly die. It is not good for man to be alone, so I will create a companion for him, a perfectly suited partner. Say suited partner. Look at your spouse and say suited partner. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Suited partner. Wait till we get home and do the dishes. Right? Now we're jumping down to verse 21, okay? So the eternal God put him into a deep sleep. Removed a rib from his side and closed the flesh around the opening. He formed a woman from the rib taken out of the man and presented her to him. Adam said at last, a suitable companion. Say suitable companion. A perfect partner. Say perfect partner. <laughs> bone for my bones, flesh for my flesh. I will call this one woman as the eternal reminder, as an eternal reminder that she was taking out of man. You guys can have a seat. Have a seat. Adam walks with God in the garden. Welcome to Easy Street, y'all. This is Easy Street. This is what it looks like. So God, and, uh, God placed Adam and Eve in the most beautiful garden you have never seen. 
right? Maybe you've seen a beautiful garden before, but not like Eden. Not one that was pregnant with life. Not one that was luxurious. Not one that was had its own irrigation system. No, nothing like that. You've never seen a garden like that. Maybe you got close to one, but nothing like it. And God placed it. God loved them so much that he gave them the most beautiful and most perfect place to live. I truly believe that, that Eden was placed in, in Wyoming. I really believe it was in there. In fact, archaeologists, no, I'm just making things up. I, Father, forgive me for lying. So that's not true, okay? So check this out. So here they are in this beautiful place. Gee, God spent time with Adam and Eve. Spent time with them. He walked with them. He spoke with them. He had a relationship with them like no other. Like none of them. You see, things are good on easy street. Life is good. You're in a good spot of life. You're walking closer with Jesus and you're growing in your relationship with Jesus. You're hearing his voice or hearing his voice is not hard on easy street. It's not hard at all. I'm not saying that on easy street you're not going to be running into trouble on this street, but you'll find that this trouble is easier to get through on easy street. The disciples walked on this street while Jesus walked on earth. Check this out. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 through 22, I want to show you how Jesus, or the disciples walked with Jesus on easy street. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Jesus says, come follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once, they left their nets and followed him. Check this out. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with, his fa with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their, uh, and their father, and they followed him. These disciples knew nothing about Jesus. They heard about Jesus. Could this be the one? Could this be the Messiah? Is this the one that we have been praying for? This is the one that we've been hearing scripture about. It, could this be it? And Jesus shows up on the scene into their place comes to their workplace and says, hey man, come follow me. They leave everything behind. Everything. John and James left dad on the boat holding nets. Boys, when are you coming back? I don't know, I'm taking off. Left them behind. Listen, they got to walk side by side with Jesus. They got to watch him they got to listen to him. They received what he was saying, and they were growing. You see, it's the same way with us here on Easy Street. It's just good. And God, can I tell you, listen, God is present on Easy Street. Say that. God is present on Easy Street. Say it again. Come on. God is on Easy Street. God walked with Adam and Eve every day. Easy Street. It's not hard to walk with God on Easy Street, is it? It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. My life is good. Hallelujah. I was waiting in line at the grocery store, and all of a sudden, the line just parted like the Red Sea, and they're like, please come and do your groceries here. And I was like, God is good on Easy Street. We went to the restaurant, and they said, your, your wait time is going to be 45 minutes. It was cool. We were patient. The soon as we sat down, they said, your table is ready. God is good on Easy Street. We went to go pay our rent. They said, you know what? You're a month ahead. You don't have to pay this month. God is good on Easy Street. Thank you, Lord, for being so good. Went to the doctor. The doctor said that you may have to have your arm amputated. Went back the next day. He said, nope. Sorry, your arm is healed. God is good on Easy Street. Went to the store, thought I was going to buy a pair of shoes. Come to find out, it was buy one, get one up. God is good on Easy Street. You with me? God is good on Easy Street. I mean, 
I know those are like sound like silly things. But God is good on easy street, right? You with me? God is good on easy street. I hope you did not close your Bibles. Because let's jump into chapter 3 of Genesis. Let's jump into chapter 3 of Genesis. Check this out, verses 8 through 10. This is still the story. This is the continuation of Adam and Eve. Remember, they're on Easy Street. Say, God is good on Easy Street. No matter how I walk on Easy Street, no matter how I swing my arms on Easy Street, it don't matter because I'm on Easy Street. Woo! Then they heard the sound of the eternal God walking in the cool, misting shadows of the garden. The man and his wife took cover among the trees and hid from the eternal one. These are the same people who walked with God. Now they're hiding. God says, calling to Adam, Where are you? Adam says, when I heard the sound of you coming in the garden, I was afraid because I am naked, so I hid from you. Adam and Eve, walking on Easy Street in a garden that you've never seen before, in a garden you've never experienced before, walking on Easy Street. And all of a sudden, now they're hiding. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and, and ate from the tree that he told them not to. Remember that? Remember they said, don't eat from that tree? You guys with me? Shake your head if you're with me, right? You need to know that you're alive. You kick it. Right? And they ate from there. So God walks onto the scene and they scatter. They scatter. They hide from God. They keep it quiet and maybe he will pass on by. Like, shh, Eve, be quiet. God's coming. Don't say anything. Maybe he'll just walk on by. Shh. Why are you making? Put those leaves down for the love of God. Stop doing those things. <laughs> You're always talking on your time with him. Gotta be Shh. Here he comes. Here he comes. And God says, where are you? Dang it. He's calling for me. <laughs> God, I'm right here. I'm hiding behind this tree. Naked. I don't want you to see me. So, so I'm hiding from you. <laughs> he didn't pass him by he calls out Adam says here we are you see God we're afraid so we hid from you hoping not to get noticed or to get in trouble I remember a time when my brother and I when we were little it is so funny when I was writing this out this, this thing this incident in my life kept coming back I was like no I don't want to talk about and then as I kept praying, praying and stuff like that, I was like, no, I don't want to talk about it. Last night, every Saturday night, you need to know that I look at my sermon and I tweak it. I think God made me put it in. So here it is. So when we were little, my brother and I, um, you ever notice that as you get stronger, you know, my parents believed in spankings, okay? It didn't matter. They would use, they would use belts and, and paddles and cars and just whatever. You know, I'm, I'm just kidding. But they would spank. But my mom's spankings with her hand didn't hurt anymore. And at lunchtime, my brother and I were kind of being obnoxious. And my mom would spank us and we would laugh. <laughs> it doesn't hurt us anymore, old lady. <laughs> and then she says, I'm going to call your dad. Like, oh. <laughs> uh, you see, my dad only worked half a block away, and so he could see he was a mechanic, and he could stop and come and whip us anytime he wants. It was lunchtime, so my brother and I would go into the bathroom, and we shut the door and we lock it, right? That's smart. That's sort of smart. And so it is on ground level. And so we hear my dad come in, and he's pounding on the door. We're opening the window, and I got my brother halfway out the window, right? Because we're going to try to escape. See, what we don't remember is that my dad has a key on top of the ledge uh, of the door frame, and so he's got it down, and he pulls it in. So here I got Chad, my brother, halfway out the window, and then there's my dad. I remember, I should have let go of my brother at that time, because he would have been freed. But my dad grabbed me, and I figured if I'm going down... He's going with me. So my dad pulls me, and I'm pulling Chad back in. And Chad is trying to hold on, and like, bam, and hitting everything as he's coming in. And my dad gave us the whatnot. Can I tell you something? Sometimes when we get ourselves in trouble, we run and hide, don't we? Welcome to Hidden Street. Adam and Eve 
were hiding from God. And they found themselves going off of Easy Street and walking into or onto Hidden Street. You see, things aren't as smooth as they were on Easy Street. Our pace with God has slowed down a bit. Our focus is slowly, slowly shifting away from God and towards our own desires and our own wants. Yes, God is in the peripheral, but on Hidden Street, our desires and our wants, our thoughts are better than His, right? So we're going to slow down our pace just a scope. In fact, um, we know that what we are doing is not right. And we know it's not God's desire for us. In fact, these decisions are starting to drive a wedge between us and God. Can I tell you something? You're the one who's putting the wedge between you and God. God is not grabbing the wedge and putting it in between you. You are the one who is doing it. So here we are. We walk on Hidden Street because we try to hide our sins from God. Can I tell you? That is impossible because God sees everything. Let me give you an example of a person in the Bible who was walking on Hidden Street. You can find this in Luke chapter 15. Check this out. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. Do you know what I'm talking about here? Product of son, you guys heard this before? Okay, check this out. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to be a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. The prodigal son walked away from his father, wanting what he thought he deserved. Right? He took his eye off of his father. He took his eye off the property. He took his eye off the plant. Right? He had his dad and, and the property and, and what, his inheritance in the peripheral, but he wanted his own. He wanted what he thought he deserved. He's the younger one. There's an older brother. Older brother gets before you get. You know what I'm saying? And he wanted He was trying to, to break tradition, trying to break things. I want my way. Only to get his way and only to find out that he didn't know what he thought he knew. And he ended up hiding out in a pit of pigs. Can you picture him? Hidden Street. Walking on Hidden Street. Had it great. Walking on Easy Street with Dad and my brother. I mean, and we, were, we could eat anytime we want. I feel good. I was working the land. My dad loved me. He was just all over it. And you know, I was on easy street. And then I became so hungry with selfishness in my own desires that I said, Dad, you give me what I deserve. Really, he deserved nothing. It was all his dad's anyways. But father who loved him so much on easy street said, Son, I'll give you whatever you want as you go on hidden street. And he did, and he was living the life, as long as he had the Benjamins, right? Or Denaros, let's go that way, okay? <laughs> spinning it, spinning it, till he had nothing. Went from the pit house to the pig house. Hidden street. On Hidden Street, we are feeling ashamed. On Hidden Street, we're feeling defeated. On Hidden Street, we're embarrassed to return to God. Can I tell you something? Pride holds us back because we won't, we, we, uh, because who wants to admit that we're wrong? Pride holds us back because we can't admit that we're wrong. Because if we admit that we're wrong, then we're weak. God, I can't come back. I'm on Hidden Street. I can't come back to you. Because if 
I do that I have to admit that I'm wrong? And if I admit that I'm wrong, then I know I shouldn't have taken my eyes off the prize. But God, it was so good to have what I wanted for a while. Hidden street. Sometimes we don't come back because we don't want to hear, I told you so. Can I tell you something? The devil's a liar. Amen. He's a liar. So we stay on hidden street. Can I tell you something? God is present on Hidden Street. Amen. Say, God is present on Hidden Street. God is present on Hidden Street. Say it like you mean it, because some of you are on Hidden Street right now. God is present on Hidden Street. God is present on Hidden Street. He showed up to take a walk with you, and he will always show up to take a walk with you. Huh. Adam and Eve. Jump into chapter 4 of Genesis. Here we go. Because, because they were on Hidden Street, God said, because of your own desires and because of your own wants. You know, sometimes a moment of pleasure causes a, a, a lifetime of anguish. And Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden that you've never seen before. That's the consequence of sometimes walking on Hidden Street. In fact, the Garden of Eden shut down. God put, uh, I call it samurai warrior angels right there, right? I mean, there's a fiery angel, uh, a seraph angel, right? Hold this, this, uh, this sword. I dare you to come, right? Come at me, bro. Right? That's the angel. Right? And from a far distance, you'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. God says, you can't come in here anymore. It's over. It's done. It's part of the consequences that you decided on Hidden Street. You had it on Easy Street. Remember Easy Street? Woo! I want to get my free Easy Street. God's with me. Hidden Street? Man, how did I get to the big pit? Check this out. Now they're out on their own. Yeah, kids. The Lord said, what have you done? It's time to his, his uh, their oldest son, Cain. You see, um, they had two sons, Cain and Abel. Eventually they had a third son named Seth. Check this out. He's talking to God. Or God is actually talking uh, to Cain. Check this out. He says, so here's a conversation with Cain, the Lord. Adam and Eve's offspring. Okay? Adam and Eve's kids. They walked on Easy Street, they walked on Hidden Street, and now this street that they're on affects their kids. You with me? The Lord said, what have you done? He's talking to Cain. Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opens its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You'll be a restless wanderer on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today, you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. Adam and Eve find themselves outside of the garden. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Uneven Street. Welcome to Uneven Street. Cain is a, is a, is a son who kept flocks. I'm sorry, Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. And it was a time where they were going to bring offerings to the Lord. And the Lord looked on favor on Abel's uh, because of his offering. You see, Cain, Cain worked the soil. And so he brought not the best of the best, but he brought sunflower seeds from his pocket that had lint. He said, God, here you go. Abel took care of the flock. I don't know if it was some flower seeds, but it was kind of like that kind of offering. Abel brought the best of the best, the fattest calf. 
here, you deserve the best that I have. I can take this to market and make so much money, but I want you to have it. Jealousy, anger, rage, pride took over Cain. Cain became angry and he murdered his brother. God confronts Cain. Here we find ourselves walking out of the will of God on our own on uneven street. You see, we're no longer walking in step or on pace with God. We decide that we're going to make our own road, Lord. I know that the road that you paved is with good intentions, but mine has better intentions. Come on, somebody on that road with me. We find it hard to hear God on uneven streets. And it's not that God has stopped talking to you, but we have stopped talking to him. We have walked or wandered away from him to the point nothing seems to be going right. And we find ourselves angry, Lord. Are you with me? Because <laughs> some of you who are on Eden Street are quiet right now. Pastor Jason, you're right, man. I find myself angry, Lord. I can't hear God. Find myself angry more. How about depressed more? How about stuck in bad relationships? Our decisions lead us deeper into the pit we are trying to get out of. We have moments where we remember walking on easy street and long to be back there, but we think it's too late. I can't get back to easy street. I'm stuck on an uneven street for the rest of my life. It's too late. I can't go back. I was walking out of, out of church one day, not this church. I was walking out of church one day when I was a youth pastor, and I was walking with one of the youth kids, and he was a very hard, difficult kid. I mean, have you ever, how many of you have children? Sometimes when you talk to your kids, do you feel like you're talking to a brick wall? Didn't I say clean your room? Yeah, you told me to clean your room. Why is your room not clean? Oh, you meant right now. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell you? Sometimes in ministry, when you're preaching, sometimes you feel like you're talking to a brick wall. And what if this kid was one of them. But can I tell you something? As your pastor, I will always continue to talk to you, even if you are a brick wall. And this kid was hard. And he was tough. He would listen. In times when he would miss youth group, I'd have these cards. And I'd send it and said, hey man, I missed you. Hope you can make it next week. Every week. I'm walking out of church with him and his parents. This kid is on uneven street. And I know it. And his parents said, uh, as we're walking out, they're like, Jason, we don't know what to do. I'll change his name. I don't know what to do with Aaron. But it's too late for him. Can you imagine walking out of the church? And you hear your parents say, it's too late for my son Aaron. You know what I said? Because I, I know I'm starting to a brick wall. And I looked, at my, I looked at this kid, stopped parents right there with me, looked him dead in the eye, and I said, listen, it is never too late. I said, Aaron, it is never too late for you. Never. Brick wall, it's never too late for you. Okay, so let's fast forward. He would, uh, about a couple years after he graduated, he said, Jason, I want you to know I kept every single card that you sent me. And you said, we're saving a seat for you. And he's like, no, you might as well give my seat up for me because I'm no good, I'm worthless. He says, but you were relentless, and you just kept sending it to me. Kept sending it to me, and finally I said, okay. And he wouldn't even show up sporadically. He joined the military, got into the military. Family. I haven't seen him in maybe 10, 12 years now. Keep speaking to the brick walls. Because... People on uneven street 
need you to keep speaking to them. And you need to speak life. And can I tell you something? If you're on uneven street and you're a parent who is speaking that to your kids, will you stop it and start speaking life into your kids? They're the next generation. Uneven street. Let me show you a, an example in the Bible. We find it in Luke 19. Zacchaeus. You guys know Zacchaeus, right? You know the story of Zacchaeus? Now he's a movie little guy. Right? So, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, right? Here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because this man, too, is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Zacchaeus was hated by everybody. Everybody. Zacchaeus was so small, I'm pretty sure when they walked by, they kind of kicked him. You guys want to play soccer today? Let's play with Zacchaeus. He was so, he's in too deep for him to make things right on his own, right? This is how deep Zacchaeus is in. He's made his bed, and so now he has to sleep in it. Jesus shows up on the scene, shows up on the street, goes to his house, and redeems him in front of everybody who wanted to play soccer with him. Jesus set this man free, and then Zacchaeus makes it right with everyone. Can I tell you something? God is present on uneven street. Say it with me. God is present on uneven street. God met with Adam and Eve and their sons on Easy Street. Listen, we all are walking on one of these roads right now, one of these streets. We're either walking on Easy Street, Hidden Street, or on Even Street. And we all have experienced being on one of these roads at some point in our lives. Maybe you're walking on on Easy, or on easy Street, but you, were, you just got off on Uneven Street. Maybe some of you right now are on Hidden Street. Maybe some of you are on Easy Street. Maybe some of you are on even, on, on even Street. Maybe the person next to you is on Uneven Street while you're walking Easy Street. All different walks of life. Can I tell you something? Jesus is walking on your street with you right now. Whether you're on Easy Street, Hidden Street, or on Even Street. Come on. Can I just can I can I talk to, to your heart right now? Can I speak to your spirit right now? Can I can I speak to the people who are honest right here right now? The ones who are sitting here thinking, oh man, oh man, I am on hidden street right now. Man, I'm on uneven street. Maybe some of you are like, I better check my wallet because I'm on easy street. I must be getting some blessing like Jason was saying. Something something's happening in your life. I tell you something, no matter what road you're on, Jesus is walking with you right now. John 3, 16 and 17 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Can I tell you something? Jesus showed up to save the world for everyone. No matter what road that they are walking on or on what road you are walking on now, Jesus died for you. And he didn't come on this earth to condemn you. He came on this earth to save you. He didn't come on this earth to say you were stuck in who you are in your past because I got a great future for you now. I didn't come in here just to point fingers and say, I judge you and I judge you and I judge you. He says, no, I came here to show you that I love you. I love you. I love you. So he dies on the cross for you. Have you ever met anybody who just went out and died for you for no reason at all because of all your sins and because of who you are, because of all the hate in your life, he died for you? Do you ever meet anybody like that before? Jesus came because God loved you so much that I will give you my son. I got two boys. I would never sacrifice any of my boys for you. That's what I'm saying. Jason is saying it. I won't. I love them too much. Jason, I'm on uneven street. Will you sacrifice Avery? No. Find a way out. God 
said, my boy, my boy, Jesus got you out. He came to save you. Maybe it's time that you look your past in the face and remind them who you are right now. Greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world, devil. I don't have the spirit of fear. I have the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Because I've been saved, not condemned. Jesus is walking the road with you right now. Believe it. Some of you need to be listening right now. Jesus is walking the streets with you right now. Check it out. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Who wants a full, abundant life? Lord Jesus, get me off of this uneven street. I'm walking this uneven street, and it is not good. And my pride is getting in the way. And I have walked so far away from you, I don't think that there's another way back. And the devil is coming to try to steal my joy, coming to steal my family, coming to kill my workplace, coming to kill my identity. I know that this is not who I am. I have failed and got off on the wrong road, been walking my own way, doing my own desires, being distracted by my own phone, that I can't hear you anymore. But bring me back because I want that life of abundance and, and fall. I want it in fall, Lord. I'm wondering if fall. You ready to have a full and abundant life? Amen. Because Jesus came to save you, not to condemn you. Amen. The Bible says in Romans that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Hallelujah. He is throwing a life, but he's throwing a life vest out for you. Just will you grab it? And some of us on the even see the life is hitting us in the face and doing all this funny work, splashing around, trying to do all this stuff, trying to backstroke and do it. Oh Lord, I can't get it. And every time he throws it back at you, he bounces off your chest. You're like, oh, I missed that one. It's because you're not trying. You want to stay there. Because my mess is my mess. Even if you don't grab the life vest, Jesus is in the water with you. Yeah. You know what? I want you to say out loud, Jesus is walking my street right now. Jesus is walking my street right now. Yes, he is. I love this verse, John 14, 6. Jesus answered. <laughs> Come on. Life vest is bouncing off of you. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Say, He's the way. He is, the way. he is the truth. He is the truth. And he is the life. He is the life. Remember, whatever street you're walking on, God is walking with you. Will you do me a favor, no matter what road you're on, whether it's easy street, or hidden street, or an even street, will you take a moment to let him speak to you? No matter what mess you're in. Can I tell you something? Last verse, right? I'll have the praise team come up. Last verse, check this out. While you're on your streets, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Look at that word forsake or forsaken. It means uh, abandon. I will never leave you nor abandon. Can I tell you something? No matter what street you're on right now, easy street, hidden street, or uneven street, he has never left you or abandoned you. 
Because our God came to save, to give you the way, to speak the truth, and to give you life. Holy Spirit, I come to you. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Father, I pray, God, that you be with us as we walk on these roads. Father, as we are on easy street, it's good to hear you. It's good to feel you. God, as we are on hidden street, it's good to hear you. It's good to feel you. God, on uneven street, it's good to hear you. It's good to feel you. Father, I pray, God, that you would just move in us right now. With every head bowed and every eye closed, listen, I don't know what's going on. I don't need to know what's going on in your life, but God knows what's going on in your life. And some of you are wanting out, getting off those streets. Some of you want to actually beg you to get off. God's ready to let you, to set you free. If you would just receive him. Recognize that he is not a God to condemn you, but to save you. Where are you right now? Nobody's looking. Nobody's paying attention. I'm going to ask you to do something. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you know it's time, decide to give your life to Christ. I surrender. I want to have that relationship. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me, and I know you're going to get me off this street. If you don't know Jesus and you're saying, I need Jesus, will you do me a favor? Just slip up your hand. I want to see you. Just slip up your hand. I want to pray for you. Maybe some of you are sitting here right now and you're saying, Oh, God, I've, I've gone, I've strayed. I need to come back. If that's you, just slip up your hand. I just want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I want to come back. I come back to you. Yes.
we sing this song, I want you to belt it out. There's something about freedom. Pastor Steve and I, we went to a gentleman's house yesterday. Praying over this man, death has been spoken over him. I mean, the color of him is fading. And we're praying and laying hands and anointing him. And before we left, he said, will you pray over my throat? Because I love to sing and I can't sing much. Jesus. He was tired. So we laid hands on his throat. God showed me that he was going to write a new song in his heart. A new song in his spirit. And if his throat didn't work, he was supposed to sing it again. Maybe your throat is hurting a little bit. It's cold and flu season. The Bible says make a joyful noise. Some of you are saying, you know what, Jesus, my, 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 my singing is horrid. My singing is so hard too. I took my sister off because I was singing the wrong song. The wrong verses. Uh, during praise, we didn't care. God was cool. He's walking my street with me. I want you to worship out loud. There's another in the fire. There's another in the fire. Come journey this to